We have a major update on Mitchell Robinson and his status for tomorrow night's game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. According to the recent injury report that was just released, Robinson's name is now listed on it. And it's because he suffered an ankle sprain. And if that's not concerning enough, the ankle sprain he suffered was on the same ankle that he just got surgically repaired. We're going to break down these latest reports and so much more today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. And make sure you have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. Mitchell Robinson suffers an injury to the surgically repaired ankle. When it rains, it pours. The Knicks can't catch a break. We can't catch a break. OG Ananobi still out with that elbow injury. Julius Randle still has not moved on to full contact. And then finally, we get some positive news. Mitchell Robinson returns for this Knicks team. And then the other night against the San Antonio Spurs, he's playing against them. Isaiah Hartenstein has fouled out. We're in OT. And then he goes up for a rebound and he lands awkwardly on that injured ankle. And then unfortunately now, we get the injury report and it says the following. Mitchell Robinson, questionable with a sprained left ankle for the Knicks versus OKC game on Sunday. Robinson had surgery on the ankle in December. What else do we need to do here? Do we have to pray to the basketball gods each and every day to make sure one of our players is healthy and doesn't go down with an injury? I don't know what else to do. And before you say it in the comments, it is not Tom Thibodeau's fault. Mitchell Robinson went through all of the practices he needed to go through, went through full contact, hit each and every milestone he needed to hit to return to the court for the New York Knicks. It is a freak accident yet again that he hurts his ankle. He sprains that ankle. And now because of it, he has an issue. He's questionable for tomorrow night's game. And it's an issue for the New York Knicks now because it puts us down another big man. We already were down a big man when we lost Mitchell Robinson. If we lose him again for another game or two, it just hurts the New York Knicks in terms of depth. And we need that depth to win these next few games. We just dropped the game against the Spurs. We cannot afford to drop games. We no longer are third in the Eastern Conference. We are now fourth. And even though other teams around the league are losing games, I do not want the New York Knicks to pick up on that trend. We need to win games, all the games that we can, so we can take that third spot, maybe even hopefully take the second seed in the Eastern Conference. Because if you get to that point, you are going to get a deep playoff push because that means your schedule for the playoffs is going to be a little bit easier than if you're the fourth seed, the fifth seed, or even the third seed. The Knicks need to win games. They cannot lose games, especially winnable games against teams like the San Antonio Spurs. Now, I know they've been playing good basketball as of late, but we're talking about this Knicks team, a playoff caliber Knicks team. We did not need to drop that game. We should have won that game. Maybe you could call it referee calls, other issues like that. But either way, we dropped it. We shouldn't have dropped that game. We needed to win it. But now we're facing OKC, who may be without SGA. That may be the only positive we have going into that game. But nonetheless, OKC is still a very strong team. And if we're going up against them without this team being as fully healthy as possible, it's going to be a hard game. Hopefully we can win the game because we need to win it. But with Robinson being questionable, it's going to be an uphill battle. But that wasn't the only name listed on the injury report. If we take a look here, Isaiah Hartenstein is probable with a right wrist sprain. And then we have OG Ananobi, elbow, and Julius Randle, shoulder, still out. Alec Burks is probable. So as you can see there, even if we get Mitchell Robinson to play, it's not like everybody is healthy on the New York Knicks. Isaiah Hartenstein, who is still dealing with that sore Achilles, still on a minutes restriction, now he has to deal with a sprained wrist. And even though he's probable, which likely means the wrist injury isn't severe, it's still another injury he has to combat along with the Achilles injury and other injuries probably dealing with that's not reported as of right now. It's just unfortunate for iHeart, who was recovering well, almost fully back, almost fully healthy to deal with another injury. So Mitch, injured. iHeart, injured. OG, out. Randall, out. Alec Burks, who missed the last few games, is now probable. 
but probable doesn't mean a guarantee. If he misses another game, that just hurts the New York Knicks and our depth. And then what do we do at that point in time? The only thing we can do is play some players significant minutes. That means Miles McBride likely playing the entire game. That means Josh Hart likely playing the entire game. That means Jalen Brunson likely playing 40 plus minutes. That means Preston Achua likely coming off the bench playing 30 plus minutes. It all depends on Isaiah Hartenstein and obviously Mitchell Robinson. But if any one of those guys go out, Preston Achua will have a time to shine. He'll get to play big minutes, even though he hasn't really been playing big minutes ever since Mitchell Robinson came back. But nonetheless, I still think Preston Achua can step up. But how many people are we going to need to step up to win the game against OKC? That's the thing. We are just dealing with injury after injury after injury. And I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to feel. Each and every time we take a step forward, it's like we take three steps backward because we have to deal with an injury, some type of sprain, some type of issue. Why can't things just go right for the Knicks? Why do we always have to deal with something? Let me say this. If this Knicks team was fully healthy and we had no injuries, we would definitely be number two in the Eastern Conference. And with all of the injuries we're dealing with right now, we are still fighting for the third spot in the Eastern Conference. Hell, we could still make a play for the second spot in the Eastern Conference if we win enough games. That's how good this Knicks team has been despite all of the injuries. I believe in this team. I believe in this Knicks organization. I believe in Leon Rose in this front office. And I think this Knicks team is going to have a deep postseason run, especially if this Knicks team is fully healthy or at least as healthy as possible. That gives this Knicks team the best chance. But talking about injuries, I know that can be debilitating. I know it's not positive and it's not the things we all want to hear. So let's move on to something a little bit more positive, like our point guard. Maybe we should call him our point god in Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson is the first Knicks player to ever make 25 shots in a game and also the first to take 47 shots. Another thing to keep in mind, most points ever scored against the Spurs. Joel Embiid, 70. Jalen Brunson, 61. James Harden, 61. That is elite company for Jalen Brunson to be in. Sometimes, even myself, we focus a lot on the injuries. So I don't want to close out this video with dealing with injuries. I want to close out this video talking about Jalen Brunson, somebody who is making history each and every single game. He just knows how to play basketball so damn well. Can he pass the ball? Yes. He's passing the ball better this year than he ever did in his entire career. He's leading this Knicks team to be one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. That's also saying something. He's a top guard in the Eastern Conference. Maybe not only in the East. He's a top guard in the NBA. Footwork is already legendary. He scored 61 points against the Spurs. 61. One point shy of tying Carmelo Anthony's record of 62. That is nuts. Insane. He is in year two. For a New York Knicks player. He hasn't even finished year two yet. What's going to happen later on in the postseason? Later on during this season? Who knows what other records he's going to break? What other things he's going to do? And what other greatness he's going to display? He has just been on a tear lately. And if you don't believe that Jalen Brunson is a superstar. You best want to believe it right now. Because he's doing everything in his power. To flip the narrative. And make everybody in the NBA. Everybody in the league know, be put on notice, and absolutely have to acknowledge his greatness, what he's been doing for this Knicks team, and what he's been doing individually as a player. It's a crime. It's criminal that he's not in the MVP running for the top 10 list right now. If you look at that list, he does not make top 10. The Knicks, without OG Ananobi, without Julius Randle, dealing with a number of injuries this season, have somehow managed to find a way to be competitive. And they are fourth in the Eastern Conference, a couple of games behind the Milwaukee Bucks for the second seed. That's where the New York Knicks are, even though they're dealing with all of these injuries. You can praise a lot of different players on this team. But for me, the one player that I'm going to praise is Jalen Brunson. Because if you take Jalen Brunson off of this team and you allow this current team to play the exact same amount of games, 
they are not going to have this record. Jalen Brunson's impact is crazy. He has been phenomenal for the Knicks this season. He deserves to be all NBA. I think he's going to make it. And we have to praise Leon Rose for looking at this guy, Jalen Brunson, so long ago, locking him down to a contract, which now looks like a steal, a complete bargain. But at the time, he was ridiculed for it. But he went through all of that, just like Jalen Brunson did. And now we are here where Jalen Brunson looks like a legit superstar, legitimately one of the best guards in the entire NBA. And everybody in New York is smiling, especially Jalen Brunson and Leon Rose. And with good reason, because Jalen Brunson is doing things we haven't seen in years. And I'm so happy to see it. Each and every time I turn on a Knicks game, I don't know what to expect. It makes me on the edge of my seat. It makes me happy. It makes me surprised. But it also keeps me engaged with this Knicks team and everything they're doing this season. It's been a magical season, a magical run, and we're not done yet. And until Jalen Brunson says we're done, we're not going to be done. He is our leader. He is our point guard. And he makes this Knicks team go. We all know it. We all recognize it. And he has been one of the best signings the Knicks have ever made. And that's kudos and praise to Leon Rose. But what about you guys? What do you think about Mitchell Robinson being questionable for tomorrow night's game against OKC, given the fact that he has an ankle sprain to the same ankle he had surgery on? And what about Jalen Brunson and his phenomenal play as of late? What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments below, guys, because honestly, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.